Hello everyone, how's it going? This is a review of chapter 1130 of One Piece. We have a really great chapter of One Piece this week. Now without further ado, let's get right into the review. First, of course, we have the cover story, where we see that apparently someone stole Yasuo's sword while Yamato and the others were sleeping. I am guessing the person who stole the sword is probably the same person that is responsible for all the strange disappearances happening in Wano lately. I am starting to get really interested in who this might be since they were able to steal the sword without someone like Yamato even noticing it. Now, moving on to the main chapter, we start off with the remaining members of the Straw Hats that were left on the giant pirate ship telling the giants that there is no reason to keep looking for the others, since they can't find them no matter how hard they look. They say that the others are probably alive, so it's better for them to just head to Elbaf and wait for them there, since they are all headed to the same place anyway. In the next part of the chapter, we see that the members of the Straw Hats that are already on Elbaf have finally gotten out of the place they were being held. And and we see that they were apparently inside a giant castle on the peak of a massive mountain that is in the middle of a huge mountain range. Luffy, of course, is thrilled by the sight, Nami not so much. We also see that the only way to get off the mountain seems to be through a really long rope bridge. Before the Straw Hats can start crossing the rope bridge, however, they see that a pair of giants are already crossing the bridge and are heading towards them. We find out that this pair of giants are actually Gerd and Goldberg, the doctor and cook of the new giant pirates respectively. Now, if you remember Big Mom's flashback, then you would remember that Gerd was actually one of Lin Lin's giant friends and Goldberg was said to have been born at around the same time as Rodo. Through the conversation of the two giants, we find out that apparently even they realize that Rodo is a bit of a weirdo, with Gerd even questioning why Hyrudin even brought him into the crew to begin with. She even goes so far as to say that Rodo is more deserving of the title of the shame of Elbaf even compared to Loki. Which based on what we learn about Loki later in the chapter seems a bit harsh. But I can sort of understand where she is coming from to be honest. As a response to Gerd's statements, Goldberg says that the reason Hyrudin brought Rodo into the crew is because he is apparently a great navigator. He also says that if Rodo heard Gerd's harsh words about him, it would only make him happier because of course it would. We also found out that the reason they are heading to Rodo's castle is because Gerd's pet owl, Piper, saw Rodo's crow, Mugin, carrying a little boat in its mouth earlier. It seems Gerd plans to capture the Straw Hats and tell Chief Yarul about what Rodo is doing. It's good to know that Yarul is still around despite being 408 years old now. Usopp after hearing the giant's conversation, is happy to finally get some confirmation that they are in fact in Elbaf. Meanwhile, Sanji is just happy to know that there are beautiful giants like Gerd around. And Luffy tries to call out to them, but Nami stops him because they literally just said that they would capture the intruders. While they are crossing the bridge, Usopp is extremely concerned about the giant sized gaps between the footholds of the bridge. Chopper reassures Nami that he is used to balancing on ropes, since that's how he used to carry Kureha back and forth from her castle. Luffy states that he can hear a roar. He also says that he has been hearing this roar since he was in the block country. Meanwhile, Sanji tells him that he is not going to go with him, and while Zoro seems willing to go along, Sanji stops him because letting Zoro go into a giant forest is just a bad idea. After that, Luffy leaves the others behind and jumps down into the forest, telling them to keep crossing the rope bridge. Nami and Chopper try to stop him, with Chopper warning him about the giant wolves down there. After that, we cut back to the giant pirate ship, where we see that they have found out about the spin Morgans is putting on the events of Egghead, saying that the Straw Hats attacked Egghead with the help of the giant pirates. We also see that Dory and Brogy now have updated bounties. Their bounties have gone up from 100 million each to 1.8 billion each, which is a massive jump. Although Robin states that based on inflation, that jump seems appropriate. So apparently, inflation hit the One Piece world really hard in the last century. They also find out that Luffy is being blamed for Vegapunk's murder, with Robin pointing out that the mark on Luffy's forearm in the picture that was used in the paper, which is most likely a message from Vivi to the Straw Hats, since she is currently with Morgans. Moving on, the giants drop some really interesting bits of information, telling the crew that Hyrudin is actually a son of the king, and also that the reason that they came to get the straw hats instead of him is because there is some trouble 
brewing on Elbaf. They also state that that trouble has something to do with the other son of the king, the accursed prince Loki. Apparently, Loki killed his father, King Harald, in order to eat the legendary devil fruit that is passed down to the royal line of Elbaf. And it seems that it took all the warriors of Elbaf to band together in order to stop Loki from escaping when he was sentenced to a crucifixion a few years ago. They also state that the world will be brought to ruin if Loki were to somehow escape, proclaiming him as the shame of Elbaf. In the final part of the chapter, we see that Luffy has found the source of the roar he was hearing, which as you would expect is Loki. Here we also finally see what Loki looks like and of course he looks nothing like the silhouette we have been shown so far. Loki tells Luffy to name himself and Luffy of course complies, telling him that he is Luffy, the man who will be the king of the pirates. Loki appears to be a bit taken aback by that. But before he can say anything else, Luffy asks him where they are and who he is. To which Loki answers that they are in the most powerful nation in the world, the Warland. Elbaf, Kingdom of Warriors, which once lived and breathed warfare. He then tells him that his name is Loki and he is the sun god who brings the world to an end. And with that, the chapter also ends. All in all, this was a great chapter of One Piece where we found out some really interesting information. The most important of which being that Hyrudin is a prince and the other prince, Loki, apparently ate a legendary devil fruit that was passed down through the royal line of Elbaf and also that he wants to bring the world to an end. Not to mention, based on the caution being shown by the other giants, he might actually be capable of doing just that. I am really curious about what kind of devil fruit it is. But it seems that we will have to wait for a while in order to find out. Since apparently, Oda is taking a two week break from the manga to work on the live action. So I guess I will see you guys then. Until then, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.